Please welcome on stage Robert Lemke. So good to be back. Um, yeah, so someone asked me yesterday, there were two peop different people asking me yesterday. One was asking, um, I think he wasn't at the talks before. So what do you do with NEOS? Uh, do you d how, how long do you use NEOS and so on? And I like these moments because, because I can say, yeah, I, I use it for websites. And, and someone else asked me more, uh, um, yeah, asked me what is actually my role in, in NEOS. And um, because I have this slide, I have an opportunity to tell you. So basically, I'm a NEOS team member like um, anyone else. And I'm uh, sometimes creating uh, features like anyone else. So there's no specific rule I have uh, or role I have besides trying to uh, keep an eye on that everything stays friendly. That's kind of my mission. And, and we are all happy. So this is about assets and resource management and all that. So the talk will be about two things. One is um, revisiting how do assets and resources and NEOS and Flow actually work, because I see that there is some uh, confusion about it and uh, things are mixed up. So I, I want to make that a bit more clear for you. And the second part will be about new features, which will be part uh, of NEOS 4.0, uh, which is going to be released soon. So who knows how Flow framework deals with images and photos and everything you upload internally? Who knows about that? How does how that works? OK, good. So let's start with that. Um, We'll start with on, on the lowest level, the Flow framework, which um, is, of course, independent from what NEOS does. NEOS is just using that Flow framework part. And the history of that, uh, in very short terms, is um, in many projects back then with Type 3, we made the experience that storing um, files in a file system and then using that file names and paths and so on in your application and storing that in the database has the big drawback that you actually um, take for granted that there is something like a file system. And that therefore, in order to scale your application, if you have multiple web servers, you always need something like shared file system through NFS or whatever you choose. Um, and that's, that's a bit... Um, difficult uh, to handle. So um, that is why in Flow, from the beginning, we try to abstract uh, the idea of files and not use file names of paths directly anywhere about uploaded content. But instead, we use PHP objects. And that is called a resource object. So resource is basically a PHP object which represents binary data which you put into the system or one of your users that could be an image, could be a document, could be anything, any binary data which should be stored and not be lost, right? And that resource object represents exactly that blob of data. So if you take a look at a hard disk, SSD or whatever, file system. Um, you also have that concept of, hey, there's a path or directory and a file name. And the system, operating system, knows which binary data to give to you when you request that specific file name. Um, but as you might know, there's also something called hard links in, in a file system, which means that <laughs> Nobody knows about, you know, symlinks, right? Symlinks are just pointers. Uh, and you know that there's a one original file and the symlink is just pointing to it. And a hard link basically means uh, that you can't tell which one is the original and which one is the pointer because internally on your hard disk, um, it is stored somewhere and there's something pointing to it. Maybe someone already had uh, problems on a live system with uh, running out of inodes. Ever heard of that? Yeah. So that is kind of the internal thing. 
And what does that have to do with resources? Well, a resource object is a representation of uh, binary data, but it's not um, kind of uh, the, the actual image. You should not reuse it. Uh, for example, if you have a book object, yeah, you're creating a bookstore and want to attach a cover to it, a book cover, um, and you want to reuse that cover at a certain other place, you will not reuse that resource object because then you're starting to create something like hard links, which will confuse you completely. Anyway, so resource means binary data. We have static and persistent resources. That's actually the names we chose for it. Static resources should, the name should tell you they never change, um, which is of course not true. Static resources means they are statically, uh, static in your file system or in the code you deliver. So they th these are the resources which are in Git, your CSS files, um, your images, uh, your company logo or something which you deploy. So that's probably something you can remember. Static resources are in Git. Persistent resources are somehow in the database or file system. Okay. And um, we a resource actually consists of two parts. One is we need a space somewhere where we store the binary data. And the other thing is we need to keep track of what binary data do we have in the first place. So um, resources, resource objects are stored in the database as, as kind of a registry. If you want to know which resources exist, you can look into the database. But in the database, we don't have the binary data. That is stored somewhere else, and that is a storage. So Flow has the concept of storage. And by default, we, we use the file system storage, which means um, everything you upload is stored in data persistent in the uh, folder data persistent resources. You've probably seen that. Now, the big advantage of having something different uh, for public and private data is, of course, that you can upload private data and it's not accessible directly uh, on the website. So the storage is only privately accessible that that is out of your website's um, web server scope. So it, there's no way to directly access the storage from outside. And we try to remind you that you should not use the storage directly by choosing very stupid directory names and very confusing file names for everything stored in there. So basically, it's just the SHA-1 hash of your content. Which, by the way, has the um, advantage that we will never store the same binary data twice. When you upload an image, then change the file name on your computer and upload it again, what the result will be that you have two resource objects pointing to one binary data on your hard disk, right? Now, if you want to publish something on your website, um, there's the easiest thing is uh, you just uh, copy what you have in the storage to the target, uh, which is a publishing target, and by default it's a file system uh, publishing target we have in NEOS, so that will end up in web uh, underscore resources. You've seen that probably. And so we don't have to copy data all around and not waste so much hard disk space. Um, there's a um, specialized file system target which is called the symlink uh, file system target which will only create symbolic links to your storage data. Okay, and these two, storage and target, are combined into something we call resource collection. And there is um, always um, the storage and, and the target defined in that collection. And we have two collections by default. One is for static resources um, and one is for persistent resources. So who has ever 
reconfigured flow or NEOS to use a different collection or different storage. Very few. So you've not, not even touched the possibilities of what you can do. So when would you do that actually? I mean, this is how, how it's configured. So it's just in, in your YAML settings, you have a collection, static, persistent, you define the storage and the target um, and can provide some options, of course. Well, one very practical use for that is if you want to store or publish your assets not on your local hard disk, but for example, in a cloud storage like S3. And for that, I created a plugin for Flow, uh, which you just um, use in your application, reconfigure your collection, and then everything is stored in S3 and not in your file system anymore. And if you want, for example, you can use, in, in the case of S3, you can use um, CloudFront and then have a CDN um, for all your assets. And you don't need to change anything in your, in your application or NEOS. And the same thing exists for Google Cloud Storage um, because um, Beach is running on, on Google Cloud. And so for that, we also created an adapter for Google Cloud Storage. So that's on the very low level um, how resources are managed in Flow. There are a few tools I, I want to uh, point you to because um, there are, of course, things you need to do sometimes import or sometimes repair things and or check if something is broken. So, for example, imagine in your database uh, where we store which resources should exist, there are some resources left which eventually you lost somehow on the way of moving from there to there or so. So actually you don't have that in your file system anymore. However that happened. <laughs> um, and there's a command called resource clean which will just check in the database there should be these resources and check do they actually exist in the storage and if not uh, you can optionally remove the entry from the database so that the registry is clean again. Um, there's another um, command which allows you to copy resources from one collection to another. So for example, if all your resources are stored in the file system and you want to move to a, cl a Google Cloud Storage um, storage, then you can define a second collection and have them active at the same time and then tell Flow to copy from one collection to another and by that migrate all your um, resources. There's also um, a plugin which I recently rediscovered, um, which is called Resource Tools. Uh, last week I, I thought like, ah, there should be a tool uh, which allows you to match um, a local directory of resources with a remote, uh, for example, Google Cloud Storage. And someone should create something like that. And then Carsten said, uh, well, you did that <laughs> half a year ago. So I looked it up. Yeah, oh, there's a plugin for that. Um, <laughs> it's stupid, right? I wonder, I mean, I get into that age probably where I create things again and again, and nobody tells me. Keeps me busy. Um, <laughs> so if you uh, get a step higher on, on the abstraction level, there's a package called Neos Media, which um, acts um, as an asset management system for Neos, ben, but can be used completely independently from Neos. So you can use that in your Flow application. And what that does is it provides you um, with a model which makes it very easy to deal uh, with typical tasks you have with assets. Like you can just say, okay, create a new asset object, import um, this binary data, and then um, add some crop adjustment and give me three thumbnails with that size. And so that that's basically a higher level API to do that. And the nice thing is it will also uh, re-render thumbnails if necessary and throw away thumbnails uh, if necessary and all that things. So the base class for in that model is uh, the asset class obviously 
Um, so it has a title, caption, resource, and I created some some little dum dummy code to show you how how that's actually used. So basically, um, first you need to create a resource object which contains the binary data. So for example, you could import a resource from a file from the file system, or you specify some URL that also works, or pass it some resource stream. And when you have that resource object, you can create a new image object, for example, or a new document object, or video object, set a title, a caption, add it to the repository, and then it's stored. And when you have it there, you could say, give me a thumbnail of that size, and uh, Neos Media will render that thum a thumbnail, uh, create a resource object for that, and make sure that you can publish it, and so on. And in all that, there, there's a um, there there are a few helpers which make it easier to use that on, on the front end side. So, for example, there's the media image helper, um, which you can use in Fluid in order to render thumbnails, for example. Um, so the reason why we created that model is um, there are a few things which are really cumbersome to keep track of. So imagine um, you create an image and then you can create variations of that. So for example, you have an image a variation which has a certain uh, part cropped out of the original and a second one which has a different aspect ratio, but it still all depends on the same original. And then you create thumbnails of each of these, right? And because you have responsive, you even have multiple uh, resolutions of that. And now when someone deletes the original image, you would need to figure out where do I have all these files stored of thumbnails and so on and remove them and clean them up. And uh, we solved that by, by a cascade, actually using uh, some doctrine mechanisms for that. So that means when you just remove an image object, all the binary data is removed automatically as well. So everything is cleaned up. Even there, there are some low-level tools you might want to use. For example, you might want to remove all existing thumbnails in order to re-render them, because who knows? <laughs> <laughs> now, there's um, another command, which is called create thumbnails. What it does not do is create thumbnails. Um, well, not, not in the way you might think. Uh, so it's not actually rendering um, PNG files, for example. What it does is um, it can look up which thumbnail objects should actually exist um, depending on a certain configuration. So imagine you would have to maintain a content management system. Uh, let's call it NEOS. And you have a media browser, and that media browser has all kinds of thumbnails of all kinds of um, assets. So you already know that you're going to need thumbnails in a certain size, a size of all these assets. And that's something you can tell um, NEOS Media by configuration and say and create some preset and say, I'm going to use that kind of size and please pre-render that. So don't wait until a user opens the media browser, but just render that right away. And with create thumbnails, you can actually create um, the, the actual th thumbnail objects based on these presets. And then in the database, you will see all the, um, all the thumbnail objects. That's this nice table. But what you see is the resource column is empty. So there's no actual binary data behind it. And there's a, s a second command for that, um, which is render thumbnails. And then uh, when you do that, you see that step by step, um, actually the resource field um, will be filled. Right, so that was the low level part. And now let's come to the very higher level part, um, how NEOS actually deals with thumbnails. So you know the media browser. And in the media browser, we have a couple of features, of course. So you can upload images, you can browse images, paginate, 
we have um, uh, tags and, and collections and so on. And rendering that page here can just take quite some time um, because all these thumbnails need to be rendered. Who's using image magic on, yeah? All right, so um, if you have images of, let's say, 30 megabytes each and try to render this page here, you might very well need something like two to four gigabytes of RAM for that single request just to render the thumbnails. Um, if they are, because Neas will look into, do I have thumbnails? Oh no, sh I should render a few and then start rendering within one request. And then you run out of memory. And that's why there's a very nice feature and that is asynchronous thumbnail rendering. You remember the uh, the view helper um, where you can add a thumbnail in Fluid? There's just an option to say make it asynchronous and then you get a URL back which is not the actual asset or not the actual image in that case but a URL which will trigger the rendering and then replace itself by the actual by, um, l image later on. So that's a very, very easy way for you to make things uh, faster um, because your page will be visible right away and some cropped logo or whatever could be rendered um, later on. So it's basically just adding the async parameter. Okay. Okay, there are a few challenges. Um, which we did discover in, in lots of uh, customer projects and of course ourselves. And one of that is all these assets are stored in traditional database tables, as you've seen, but our content is stored in the content repository. Um, most of the time that's no problem, but when you start to translate content, for example, there's no way to translate assets. And probably most of the time you think like, why should I translate that nice picture of a beach? Um, well, it might be that you want to use a different, slightly different uh, picture, but also there's metadata involved. So there might be a title, a caption and so on. And so these two worlds live a bit independently. So that's why there's, there's the old idea to eventually move the whole management of assets also into the content repository in some way. Um, that would mean that what you've seen, the domain model you've seen uh, in Neos Media, that this was actually would actually become some kind of nodes in, in the content repository. Right, and um, also when you, I mean, the, this whole model I've shown you is very easy to use and that was of course the idea behind it, but our concepts evolved and nowadays you probably want to use it a bit differently. You don't want to have getters and setters and uh, it's use it active record style. And we discovered then uh, when we start using event sourcing, especially uh, that we would like to have a bit of a different API. By the way, this will add an additional problem. Now, I mean, we have assets in the tables and we have the content repository, but when we additionally have event sourcing, um, we have three worlds. So imagine we'll have um, the content repository event sourced. That's pretty nice bec because, I mean, everything depends on the events. That's the single tru uh, truth. And you can always replay things. But if all the other data is not stored by events like users, for example. Um, so if you want to replay everything which happened by the events and it's referring to a user which doesn't exist anymore, but it existed back then at the time you wanted to replay that event. Anyway, goes too far. Uh, but I want to say we have these three different things and that's our challenge. We need to get them together into hopefully one event source content repository based data store for everything NEOS. 
Okay, so um, that is everything which exists. And now uh, there was always the idea, how could we integrate um, third-party asset management services, um, a digital asset management or some other store. And originally the idea was to use stores for uh, storages for that. So like I've shown you the S3 storage or the Google Cloud storage, we could just create another one for some asset management system. However, the problem is that is way too low level. So what if, um, for example, you create a Dropbox integration and someone deletes the file in Dropbox, that would mean it's not available for NEOS anymore and, and something will break. Also, you don't have any kind of additional meta information um, which you might want to use. So we needed a way to have a higher integration. And now imagine you have 60,000 files in your asset management system and want to render thumbnails for that in the media browser. That would mean using the existing approach, you would download all the bi binary data, create thumbnails in NEOS and then store that in a storage again. That would, tip, would be completely stupid because in the end you would have all the 60,000 files in, in your NEOS application um, and could, yeah, you need a lot of storage, it's very uh, slow, doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's why um, in some project, I'll show you in a second, um, I came up with the idea that we need something I call asset sources. So it's a high level concept. Um, an asset source is a third party system you want to integrate. So something like uh, a digital asset management system or something like Google Drive or Dropbox. And an asset source defines um, the capabilities of that source. So can it actually, is it read only? Can it handle tags? Does it support collections? Does it provide IPTC metadata or not? And then we don't have asset objects there because asset objects, have, as you've seen then in NEOS Media, um, tell you that all the data is already there. So you have access to the binary data and so on. Uh, but instead we are using asset proxies. So they behave more or less like asset objects, but they are just a placeholder for content or for assets which live remotely. And instead of asking an asset, give me the binary data of a thumbnail, you can ask an asset proxy, give me a URL I can use for displaying a, th a thumbnail of a certain size. And now your DAM system can provide you with URLs and you don't need to create the, the thumbnails yourself, right? So that in the media browser, you can just display all the assets by just using the URL the remote system will give you. Right, so um, end of last year and, and uh, in January, I um, created some integration uh, for a project for Cornelsen Schulbuchverlag. <laughs> Um, they use a DAM system called Elvis, um, which is quite uh, quite an enterprisey system, uh, which can do all kinds of rights management, uh, license management, and that's also one of the reasons they are using it because they want to make sure that they actually have licenses for the photos which are used on the website. And I hope I don't uh, get in conflict with any NDA I, I might have uh, signed, but <laughs> I show you how that actually works in there. There are people from Kunesen here and they could now jump and say, no, don't show that. Oh, I already did. Um, <laughs> so it's just a regular NEOS website. I have a, a bit of an old version in this demo here. And now what you see is um, that there are additional media sources. So you have NEOS, that is what you upload directly to NEOS, and now you have Elvis. And you can just, for example, search for certain images in Elvis um, because it supports full text search. 
Um, and then you get the displays res um, results displayed, um, could be PDFs, could be images. And in order to use something, uh, you know, well, you just click on it and then in the background, the original uh, binary data is imported to NEOS. Um, you can just use it like any other asset on your website. And for the time which you use it on your website, NEOS keeps the binary data in its own store, but um, that is completely transparent to, to the user, so you won't see it appearing anywhere. And when you don't need it anymore, so for example, if you remove that image from the pay, uh, website, it will be cleaned up again automatically. So NEOS knows that this asset is not used anymore, so we'll just throw away the binary data. And the big advantage of that is, of course, um, for an editor, it feels like any other NEOS assets. So it's completely seamlessly integrated. Uh, but also it decouples you from external systems. So if for some reason you need to take uh, the DAM down or it cannot handle all the load, you're completely independent because everything the website needs is stored in NEOS. Yeah, so um, that is kind of um, the, the feature I, I want to provide in the next version uh, in NEOS 4.0. Yeah, as I said, it, it cleans up. And um, if you want to clean up um, content, uh, these resources yourself or want to see what happens, um, actually I improved an existing command for that. That is called uh, media remove unused. Now you see in a table which assets are not used anymore and uh, that's grouped by uh, different uh, collections and then you can actually remove them again. So the idea is, I mean, there are so many different systems we could integrate now um, and they are very different. I, I really discovered when looking at APIs that some, for example, don't support pagination, some in a very different way. And that's why um, I started using interfaces for that so that your asset source can provide certain capabilities. Um, as I already said, it could be a read-only asset source or it could support folders or it could uh, support some other kind of metadata. And what I'm going to provide um, in, in NEOS 4.0, if the pull request will be merged, um <laughs> Um, is the basic asset sources API and that means that the internal NEOS uh, asset sources management will already use that new API. But um, I'm pretty sure that for third party services this API will still change so um, it's not recommended to use that in production without really keeping track of the further development. So um, because now that we start having it in the core, we can start integrating other services, but for th from that we will gain the experience um, to know what, what we need to change in the interfaces. Okay, so that was the concept. <laughs> Do you have any questions about that? That was too early, right? Yes. Why is it turned off? <laughs> okay. uh, why are you using uh, SHA-1 as file descriptors? Yeah. So why am, are we so using... So old and broken. And so why are we... And teach developers to use that. Yeah. Thing. Why are we using SHA-1 as file, uh, uh, file name descriptors? Um, well, that has been implemented about nine years ago, I would say. And um, so, so far we haven't heard of any conflict. Um, so it's not a security feature. You have to be sure about that, right? We're not using SHA-1 for security reasons. So, so it's sufficient, maybe still sufficient. Yeah. It is like common knowledge not to use it anymore. Since 2005? Yeah, since 2005. Yes. Okay, I, uh, okay that, that's news to me, but... Um, I mean, we are aware of that you can produce conflicts with uh, SHA-1, 
um, but I haven't heard of any case where it happened like uh, naturally. So I think uh, if we would rely on it for security purposes, then we should directly change it. And um, but well, we can use other hashing um, for for these file names um, in the future. But it would be a breaking change. So it, that's why we didn't address it so far. So anyway, um, it is not used anymore in the new system. So it's we have other identifiers. So for example, the asset source will deliver their own identifiers in order to find the assets again. And the SHA-1 hash also had. Uh, one big problem and that is for example if you want to create a thumbnail and not wait until it's rendered but use the url right away you have to wait until it's done because you cannot know the sha1 of the rendered content so you cannot know the url so apart from that so that's probably also one one reason we didn't change it because we thought uh or i thought at least uh, the concept in general needs needs some overhaul Um, I have a question uh, regarding when you tag some asset uh, source uh, that was coming, say, from Google Drive. Uh, will it somehow be reflected in Google Drive, like by putting it into some folder, or like this? Uh yeah, that depends on the implementation of that system, right? Um, so I would say definitely yes. Um, we the idea would be when you switch to a, an asset source. Um, which supports tagging or collections, um, that what you change in EOS, if that is allowed by your asset source, uh, it would, of course, store directly in the asset source, not in EOS. Um, and as far as I've looked, um, there are really also quite different implementations of what an asset source might consider a collection. So, yeah. And by the way, you can even disable the internal NEOS asset source. So that means that your editors can only use the external system for asset management. And they can even upload And they could even upload it to the external system, yeah. So it's, um, I have one more thing. Um, let me try that. Because now that we have some time, I wanted to take a photo of you guys. Uh, so, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I tr try again, yeah, that's nice, okay, um, ah, yeah, I, I wanted to show something, and that is, um, so, you cannot see it because it's not mirrored, nah, Ah, I can actually, ah, just, just a second, I can just, uh, uh. now you can see it. Okay, um, so that's our website, and I wanted to, to create a blog post ab about this, so um, to tell you about the details and when you can use it, but I thought um, I need to log in. Ah, that's so stupid. That's what you do with your remaining time if you're fast in your talk. So that's me. Still snowy. Okay, let's try again. So you see, uh, I have lots of pictures here, but I also created a new asset source called Google Drive. And look what what we have here. These are the people I tested it with. Um, <laughs> right. So and that's the idea of asset sources. <laughs> okay. Ah, I have another thing. So um, it says you're out of time, so.
Anyway. Um, wouldn't it be nice if you could on not only integrate your own assets, but also something like from Unsplash or other stock photo services? Um, and because I, I discovered while I was developing asset sources, um, why not integrate um, sources you don't even own yet and uh, improve the search capabilities, collections and everything? And now imagine your editors um, would create content and you're subscribed to certain stock photo uh, services and they wouldn't have to leave NEOS in order to purchase a stock photo and all the credit handling and rights management for your users would be done directly in NEOS. So as I see it, this is now the foundation we would have for that. And um, if you have ideas for integrating such a service or even have customer project, that will be very exciting to discover uh, what we can do with that. So now that's about asset sources. <laughs> Mm-hmm.